one of the questions that came up as well in the last uh, in the last module was, well, should I go or like what are the benefits of going for a broad or a narrow scope in your design? And to start off, I would highly suggest that you kick off with a narrow scope. Um, broad sco scopes can be overwhelming for participants, both for people that are applying to the round and people that are evaluating the rounds. If you have a very broad scope in terms of having several categories, this makes it really hard, particularly on a couple of points. The first one is that participants have a limited attention span. This means that if you're asking them to switch context often because they are either evaluating projects in several different categories, or they are able to apply within different categories. It's not clear if the impact that they had belongs only to one category or it could fit into two different ones. This makes it really taxing in terms of participation. And this, how, when it becomes taxing, it can also impact and affect the way in which the distribution is taking place, the way in which people are better able to evaluate the projects that are participating in the round. So it can be, it can become very overwhelming for everyone that is involved, even if you're providing clear definitions. A second point that's important to consider is that your participants will usually have an expertise in a specific area, maybe two at most. And if you're having several different categories running at the same time, it may not be maybe not all of your participants are going to be able to either evaluate the different projects, which means then that you need to think of other um, mechanisms that will still make it fair for everyone or yield the best possible outcome for everyone participating in your round if it's very diverse or if the categories are very, or if there are several different categories. And again, one of the things that this can lead to is like, just it can become really overwhelming. And then the other one is if you have several different categories and they are all at the same level, it may be difficult for people to prioritize what they should be paying more attention to or what they should be valuing more. And this again is can affect the way in which funding is distributed and even the perception of like, well, is this thing more valuable than this other thing? It makes it difficult to assess. And more than just assessing, it also makes it difficult to compare who should I be awarding or rewarding more funds to, or like who should be receiving more votes if you have several different categories playing at the same time. And I think here, a really good example that we saw was the last Richard PGF round. So in this round, we saw that one, there was a specific, there was a scope, there were clear categories, there were clear initial definitions of what falls within or what is contained with the, each one of these categories. There were some examples of measurements that people could include when they were applying or like how people could think of whether the work or impact that they were that they generated was valuable or not. But we have four very different categories. We've got a highly technical one, which is the OP stack. Then we've got one that is also very niche in terms of collective governance. So one of the things that we saw was that one, people within the batch holders, each of them had their own expertise and based as well on their own professional situation or like their environment, the participation in different communities, they had different perspectives on what is valuable for each one of them. But this also incentivizes then another game, which is, well, if I know that there's other people that are voting more technical or that are going to give preference to these other projects, then maybe I should push more for say collective governance, or I'm going to push more for end user adoption because I am familiar with the struggles of people going into the Web3 ecosystem and using these different tools. So this, to some degree, can silo how the different voters are participating in your process. And it's also not necessarily very clear, okay, from these four categories, 
how would you be able to compare or what are the baselines that you can use to compare someone that is building infrastructure, the amount of work that is required for that, the cost that that has, the impact that it can generate versus someone that is enhancing or improving the developer ecosystem. So this makes it cognitively difficult for the people that are evaluating the round, not only because they don't necessarily have the knowledge for the different for the different areas, but there's also it's a if you're not prescribing what is the most valuable thing in your ecosystem or like what is the thing that you would like to incentivize the most, it can make it difficult to come to a, an understanding what should we be rewarding first or like what is most needed within the ecosystem. And as I said, it's sort of like one of the things that we saw, it's like everything is happening at the same time. So this this was for, like this last comment was from the perspective of someone that is voting. But at the same time, this also happens for your applicants. Like your applicants are like, wait, wait, wait why is it more important? Like all of the infrastructure is getting so much money and the individuals that are contributing to end user experience that are leading adoption, they're not getting as much attention as these other, as these other groups. And then you also have these different ways in which how people and how projects are showcasing their impact is going to look very different, which one, it means that for applicants, it's very broad. It's a free, it can be a free for all, depending as well on how you're designing like your form, uh, your application form, which is something that we'll see later on. It's going to look vastly different from one to another, which then when the role of the voters comes in, it makes it really difficult to compare with one another. How do I compare uh, the infrastructure that is powering two or three different chains with a hackathon that brought 40 new developers into the ecosystem? How can I compare the value generated by these different initiatives? And then as I shared as well, sort of like having to change context as you're going from one, like from one category to another, becomes highly complicated. And even is if as a round operator, you are giving enough time for voters to like, in this case, for example, we had uh, Optimism had a phase, the voting phase lasted almost a month. It being very realistic, most of your vo voters are not going to be allocating like, okay, there's four categories. I have four weeks. I'm going to use one week to go through each one of the categories or like I'm only voting for these two categories. It's just going to, usually it's just going to happen at the, in the last week or the last two weeks. So take that into account. Like you are interacting with humans. Humans are not perfect and they have their different ways in which they will prioritize how they engage with your uh, with your mechanism. And if it's complicated or if it's a lot of work that needs to be done, that is also going to impact how they are engaging with it. And so here, for example, one of the things that was developed as well for this last this last retroactive round for optimism was, well, let's also narrow this. Like within one, like each one of these categories can also seem like such a large world in and of their own. So one of the things that you can do to improve how people engage with your with your mechanism is to ensure that you're scoping tighter, even each one of the categories. If you have, say, like two categories, ensure that you are scoping it very specifically. Like what how are you defining impact within the categories that you're that you're suggesting or that you're using in your in your round? Why is this impactful? Like what is the baseline that you're going from? And what are you trying to foster and to incentivize? What should be achieved? What do these stakeholders look like? Who is benefiting from the impact that is generating? Like who are the audiences that are enabling this impact? This kind of information is going to enable people to make better decisions when they are evaluating the projects that are applying. But this is also going to enable projects to better understand what is the North Star that you've set for what you're trying to achieve with both with your round and maybe probably with your organization. And I'm going to go real quick through the face part so that we can get to the testing things out and so that I can look through the different comments that I have seen popping out in the chat and 
share some answers and as well hear more questions. Um, so there's at least on the way that, for example, um, that doubt drops and that optimism's Richard PGF round have been run. There is at least four phases that you should take into account when you're designing your round. And to get to the point of deciding what does my what will my timeline look like, you need to have a very defined, you need to have a very clear scope of what your round is going to look like. Because this is going, the way in which you're scoping and what you learn through the process of scoping is going to give you information on how much time will people need to complete the process in an optimal way so that I can get good results. And if it's not enough time or if it's not an optimal way, at least you're aware where this is coming from and that this is not, this may be linked to some of your decisions around the design, but it doesn't mean that you have like a failed experiment or you have a failed mechanism. It's just based on how you're choosing the way in which you design your round. So the first one is, the first phase will be the announcement. And this is public facing phases, right? Like in the process of scoping, there's also going to be different phases in which you're uh, analyzing the, what is the goal of my, of my round? Who is my audience? Who are my participants? What kind of information am I looking at? How do I build the application form? But these are the rounds that are user facing. So the first one is going to be the announcement. You want to let people know that the round is happening so that you can start aligning the incentives. You give, this is sort of like when you give a shout out and it's like, start, go, start building, start producing this kind of impact that we believe is valuable in our community or in our ecosystem. The second one is going to be the project sign up. So you've allowed enough time, like if you're doing this in, a way in which you want to incentivize future work, you give enough time from the announcement to the project sign up so that people are able to deliver the impact or the value that you're looking for. In this project sign up, you should provide room for questions and support. Like even if you, usually even if you create a really good form, there's still gonna be questions around does this fall under the kind of value that you're expecting? Like, is this type of metric valuable or useful? Um, and you should provide spaces to answer these questions and provide support around this. Because again, this reduces the friction for people applying, which means that at later rounds, they will still be incentivized and interested in participating. They will have a better applicant experience, uh, but it also enables you to start streamlining what the information is going to look like that people are going to be voting on. Then the third phase is the voting phase in which one, you should have prepared already um, information and materials, support, tools that will make voting easier. You will have already decided in this case, for example, we're all, I think everyone is looking at leveraging easy, the easy reach PGF tool for voting. Um, so get really familiar with what is the experience? What is the voting flow? What are people going through? Where could they get stuck in? So that you're ready to provide assistance, which means that more people are going to be voting. And then again, if you run another round, people are going to be incentivized to participate again as evaluators of the projects that have applied. And then the last phase is going to be the results and distribution. So announcing the results of your round, how can you if you want them to be verifiable, how can you do this? Like, how can you create legitimacy around your round? This can be done through like CK proofs, like if you don't want to reveal the specific votes or depending on the mechanism that, on the voting mechanism that you're using in infra, how can you share information so that people can trust that the results of your round are reliable and that the way in which people voted is what is being um, what's being presented at the end, and then the distribution. And I think the most important part for the results and distribution phase is it's essential that you provide certainty around what the next steps are and which depth is each person in. Like I've seen several, like a lot of friction that usually goes around, like if projects need to KYC afterwards, like 
Where do they stand on their KYC? Has it been completed? Has it been accepted? When will they start receiving the funds? And just having clear communication on which stage the projects are in and what's happening uh, is going to enable you to have and provide a better experience again for the people that are participating in this process.